Hello, friends, and uh, welcome to episode 82 of the Chemical Podcast. Today it is Thursday, it's March 21st, and I just thought I would do a little bit out of the ordinary type of podcast today because uh, tonight Tina and I have knit night at the workshop studio place we have, and uh, we need to get that place ready. We need to get some Easter decorations ready. And uh, since I have not been having that much time knitting, I don't have that much new uh, knitting to show you. So I thought let's do something a little bit out of the normal uh, podcast and take it with me to the studio and hang out with me for the day. Get ready for knit night. Uh, I don't think we will be dyeing yarn today, but we will definitely be looking at uh, the studio and I don't know yet. I haven't planned exactly what the content of today's episode will be, but uh, hopefully it will be fun and you can come with me to uh, work and we'll do a lot of chit chatting and yarn talking. And uh, of course, I'll show you the progress that I made on the melancholy, even though it's not that much. But uh, let's go to let's go to the studio. So this is how the showroom is looking right now. You can see we have some hearts hanging from the ceiling because we had it all decorated for Valentine's. Tina and I have this idea that we want to change the decorations in here for every season or holiday. And since the Valentine is long over, uh, we want to um, make this room totally Easter ready for when we have knit night tonight. We have approximately 27 ladies that will join us tonight for knit night and uh, we love those events it's just so much fun to have people here so i just wanted to show you it's a little bit messy right now we just came home from a knitting event last weekend so uh, this is what we managed to do so far and we need to make room for all these knitters so we have to redo some of the interior we have here i think we need to remove this little bookshelf we have on the couch probably put that way out in the back and have some seating areas over here we have the red carpet. We'll put that out for our ladies to arrive later. And our little beach flag, we're gonna put that outside as well so people know where that they have arrived to the right location. And of course, we're gonna turn on all these lights so we can have some focus on the, the yarn and make uh, everything look pretty. This is from the other side. And I can hear my water is done boiling so let's go make a cup of coffee and maybe we should go upstairs for a little chit chat so i came to my office upstairs and this is not a very pretty background i know that my background at home is a little bit more cozy but this is what it looks like when i'm at work i even tried to put a little plant there but it still has christmas decorations on it so i'm hopelessly behind on making the office space look Good. This is also a workplace and uh, Tina and I share the love for really <laughs> pretty things and aesthetics and we have agree, we totally agree on what is good taste and what is bad taste and we are very uh, picky with what kind of things we want and what we like and at the same time so we're both just complete messes and we have Looking at Tina's place, she has three empty Coke bottles and a tea bottle and a water bottle and some cookies and hand cream. And I'm the same way, except that I just cleaned my space, but usually it's not that clean. So I always have coffee mugs, <laughs> Coke cans, um, like granola bar, paper, whatever, all the time. And my husband says, you guys are so messy, but we, we are creative people, so we work and we make messes and our brains work best that way and then we just clean up that is kind of the 
that is that is how we rotate and work around here this is my mug from Fene. Uh, I have some knitting friends, me and Marie and Mette, and uh, we take turns gifting each other knitting related gifts whenever we go to the Knit Festival of Fene. And this was mine, and it was the, the, this was the gift that I bought. Um, and it says, may your stitches never drop and your yarn stash be plentiful. I've shared this before, I just wanna show you again since that was the mug that I picked for today. In a second, I'm gonna <clears throat> pack some orders. This morning, I uh, shared on Instagram that I had two Easter uh, eggs uh, left. And Easter is coming up really soon, uh, in a few days. Uh, everyone here in Denmark has uh, Easter break. So <clears throat> I wanted to get rid of the last two, so I just showed a picture of the final product. Usually when I set up these surprise boxes, I will just put a picture of um, like a layout and then the box will be a surprise. So you kind of, the, the picture will always kind of hint a little bit to what kind of colors I have dyed this year. And I'm, I, I didn't keep one for me. And now that I look at it again, I just feel so bad. But this is the Easter egg for this year. This is the main skein. And uh, I just chose my Kemijo uh, suck yak base for this one so they you couldn't choose the base this was the base <clears throat> and then the and then all the minis and uh, if you look at the picture on the this was the inspiration picture so it's kind of these dusty caramel pink colors so I really I really think this egg turned out really really good and I just sold the last two this morning, so I was debating one, whether or not to keep one, but um, <clears throat> I can't keep one every time I knit something, or not knit something, but every time I do a surprise box, I can't keep one for myself because I don't have time to use them anyway. And another thing is that if I keep one of these and I start knitting and sharing those pictures on Instagram, uh, people want to know, oh, what is the colors? Can I get the colors? And then they can't get the colors. So it's, it's not really a good <laughs> advertising um but yeah this is the easter egg for this year and i will be sending those out in a little bit and <clears throat> i can show you also the mushroom from uh, march i don't think i did that the last time because it was i wanted to make sure that everyone got it but this is the gold tusk i'm really happy about this i think i might keep one for me i don't think i saved one for myself Yet, I think this could be just be great Easter socks to wear every year for Easter. And I still have a few of the January socks left. This is a Makina bonnet, bleeding bonnet. It's a Makina uh, type of mushroom. So I have still have January and I still have March. I don't have any February left, except for one set that I kept for myself. And I'm thinking I'm just gonna keep a set of all of them this year and uh, just so I can share a picture in December and maybe just sell all 12 at the end of the year. I haven't decided on that yet, but that could be a possibility if I, if I don't, if I don't use any of the yarn before. And it's my plan to not to do that. Um, I have also made uh, some extra three skein sets to put in the shop just because I have so many minis and it's, um, yeah, I think it's easier for me to combine the colors that look good together because I have them right at hand so I can tell and then make these little three skein or five skein sets. I have also dyed some new colors that I will show you when we get downstairs. I have to show you a beautiful thing because I have a knitting angel. I call her my knitting angel. Her name is Jette <clears throat> and she knits for me when I don't have the time. And um, she'll knit anything. I said, is there not anything you don't want to knit? And she says, no, I'll knit anything. So I thought, <clears throat> okay, very complicated, not very complicated, but at least a project that'll take a little extra time and that I have completed before and I didn't really feel like completing it again. It's my diamond sweater. And this is, this is how it looks. Uh, you're gonna knit this one up for me in my peach, soft peach colorway in my silk mohair base. Uh, it takes everything between for, I think almost in every size is for a skein of silk mohair. 
and you can knit yourself this beauty. I just want to share it because I think it's just gorgeous. I feel a little sad I didn't get her to knit it in my size. <laughs> maybe she'll maybe she'll she'll accept to do that uh, another time. Um, this is my actually this is one of my first designs I ever made as a designer, and um, it was such a challenge to knit this, write the the pattern, and uh, my friend Meta helped me. Uh, and this is what kind of kickstarted the whole Camejo knit um, business. And so this is very precious, this design, very precious for me. I have this sweater in navy blue, um, and I knit that out of the first version of the pattern. I have learned so much since, and I have adjusted this pattern a few times, but because I just didn't, something happened. <laughs> so the shoulders are a little too long, so my it's kind of an off the shoulder on me and that's not really the point of the sleeves and that's supposed to be like way out it's okay to be out here but not down on your arm anyway uh so mine doesn't fit but i really want to <laughs> make another one uh and maybe i'll have yet to make you another one but um yeah this is what it looks like and um this little diamond lace pattern i fell in love with so since this one since the diamond sweater I have done the Giselle shawl, which has the same lace pattern. I have done the Giselle hat. I have done the spring, um, is it just called the spring? Spring diamond sweater, the spring diamond vest, <laughs> and also the mega diamond um, cardi. And I'll show you all those designs when we get back downstairs. And just to show you how many different designs I have using the same pattern. So once you get the hang of this, you can knit all those patterns. And it's a really easy, uh, lace pattern to knit because it's just the same three uh, rows that you just continue and complete. And once you get the hang of it, you can always tell if you're going, if you're decreasing or increasing. So it's um, it's really not as hard as it looks. It is knit uh, bottom up. And maybe that's a scare for someone, but um, that's the way. It's, that's just the way it's done. <laughs> So yeah, I just wanted to share that because Ayeri gave me this uh, this Saturday. I was at a knitting event in Vile. So for to those of you who came to say hello at the knitting festival in Vile, thank you so much for that. It's just precious um, to meet you guys in reality, in real life. I love that. Um, and, uh, and also appreciate how many of you actually said hello and thank you for your podcast. And we enjoy watching because I know it kind of takes a little courage to just, you know, speak to someone and, and tell them that you like what they do. So I appreciate you, your compliments and uh, all your kind words. That means very much. It just fills my heart and uh, makes me want to do this even more. So so thank you for the encouragement. It means a lot. Um, yes, that was all Saturday. We had the knitting event in Weile at the Fieberfolk. And then on Saturday, that was Saturday, then on Sunday, I'm a friend, Mede, who has the local yarn store. Her and her husband, they have like, uh, what is that called? Um, like the stock they have here. And they have this huge, like a, what is that called? Like when you have a huge sale from your warehouse. Um, so whatever they had from like old yarns or discontinued colors or whatever, they had like this huge warehouse sale. I don't know if that's the right word. I hope you know what I mean. Whatever's in stock that you want to sell, you have like a stock market, <laughs> not a stock market. But my dictionary says stock sale. So I hope, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, they had a, this huge sale on Sunday and because it's a very popular uh, yarn store in Denmark, at least their online shop is, is huge. So they could attract so many uh, customers. So Tina and I said, we should open the doors on Sunday so we can have all their customers come and say hello and see our showroom and maybe buy some yarn and some of uh, Tina's leather work. And uh, Thomas and Meta, they're a good friend of mine, so it's not, a, it's not we're not competing. And they even put a sign on their door, don't miss out on the hand-dyed yarn down the street. So beautiful collaboration we had there, uh, mostly for us. <laughs> um, so we had, we came home Saturday evening, we redid the whole showroom and, you know, unloaded the truck, got everything set up. I counted my stock so I know that everything was good for online and then ready to sell on Sunday. So Sunday morning at 10, we opened, not knowing if anyone would show up. 
but a lot of people uh, actually stopped by and the beauty of it was that it was so many local people so people that live in the area not so far away that didn't know about us so that was even better i think that we could have you know delivering out um cards so people knew where to shop and when to how to uh, meet us in the future so that was great yes so that was the weekend and um then the last couple of days i've just been dying whatever is out of stock because of the few folk and uh I had so many people interested in, them, in my Messiah base and I sold out in three colors. So I had just dyed those yesterday and they're hanging to dry. So I put those back in the shop. So they are all back in stock. I even did a new colorway that I will show you that I haven't had a name for. I don't have a name for that yet, but uh, we can go check that out. Let me show you my progress on my melancholy sweater. I feel bad this is taking so long, but um, you know, Esther is not upset about it. It's not uh, really that cold anymore you can totally tell spring is coming and uh, as long as this is ready for my nest knitting event it's always good to have these um projects to bring for uh, the knitting events and i don't have another event until august and then i have like three in a row that'll be rough anyway i am done with the body on this and i'm working on one sleeve and I know it looks very narrow, but it's because it's a three by one ribbing. So once I block this, it'll be fine. So good thing I have a little bit of an Easter break at the summer house very soon. And um, I can finish my sweater. And uh, I promise I'll do a summer house vlog when we go uh, next Thursday. Um, I didn't do one last weekend because it was only me and Lars. And we had so many deals with... Um, woodworkers, handymen, I don't know the right term for that, but we want to do some um, rebuilding of the summer house and we had a lot of people come and look and kind of give us um, expert advice on what to do and how to do it and how much money it'll cost. And um, yeah, so that took up most of the time on Saturday. And then I just really didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like it. I was a little bit tired actually. And when I finally take out a few days to relax, I just didn't really, really want to mess with the camera and being pretty for vlogging. <laughs> Not that I usually am, but anyway, you know what I mean? It, it just still takes up, you know, have to, to feel that um, vlogging spirit. And I was just I was way too tired, but I'm thinking um, that we, I could do this uh, this weekend, coming weekend, because um, Nomi and I are going to go by ourselves. Uh, Lars is out and Esther's working and not working, but she has uh, friends to see in Copenhagen. So she'll do her thing and we will do our thing and we will be having a Easter lunch, which is a big tradition. And we will be having our first uh, Easter beer on the terrace or the deck. Uh, no matter the weather, we have had Easter beer in snowstorms and in sunshine. It doesn't matter the weather. We will always have the first beer outside. Um, and that's the tradition I really, really, really like. I love Easter lunch traditions. We have beer and snaps <laughs> and Easter eggs and a lot of fun. And because um, Esther's not going and Nomi will be there and we have, some of my friends are coming and their daughter is Nomi's best friend. So it's just all coming together and my parents will be there and we'll have we'll have a blast. So that, that I can't wait to do that. That'd be great. Actually, my parents are coming today as well for lunch. Uh, they are going to spend a week at our summer house before we arrive and um, yeah, so they're just, it's on their way <laughs> to the summer house. They're going to stop by and say hello to Nomi because she had knee surgery last Thursday and everything went well. Uh, but of course, having knee surgery is not fun. Uh, and I don't know all the English terms for whatever happened in her knee, but it was a big thing. It was like two things out of place and they fixed that. And of course, it's just, it's just, she has a lot of pain and... You know she's walking on her crutches and she's doing good as so it's just amazing to see such a young person having a surgery and and they were kind of preparing us for be prepared her uh, entire knee might turn out blue and and fictions and blah blah and nothing happened she's just such a young beautiful leg and uh, no infections no nothing so that was good she's doing good and surgery went well and that is good for a mom's heart uh, I really hate that they took her down and, you know, have to put her to sleep and not put her to sleep, but uh, the anesthesia is just, oh, I've seen, watched too many episodes of Grey's Anatomy. I know that plain surgeries can go wrong. So my imagination was like racing out there. Anyway, I 
before I go further with whatever's going on in the room today, I just wanna, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for your uh, responses uh, on my latest episode about <clears throat> the review and that whole trust pilot, bad review thing. I am overwhelmed by your support and your love. And uh, thank you to those of you who just commented and uh, even those of you who didn't, but I can feel your love and support through the screen anyway. And especially a huge thank you to those of you who actually went to the Trust Pilot app. It's at the bottom of my website and gave me a good review just to kind of even out the one bad one. Uh, you gave me more than I could have ever wished for, asked for or expected. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. I love you guys. It's just your support and your love is, um, it's uh, the gasoline to this truck, right? <laughs> this is what keeps this motor going. So uh, I appreciate that. I will turn this uh, little chit chat, I'll close that down and I'll see if I can um, get some stuff done downstairs. I don't know when Tina will be here and I don't even know if she'll be able to carry the couch with me because she still has her leg in a cast. So, but we need to redecorate, make a lot of Easter eggs to be hanging down from the ceiling and I need to be doing lunch for my family. So I'm a busy lady. So let's go and see if we can uh, get this showroom to look a little bit better and a little bit more midnight worthy. Orders have been packed. Let's bring these downstairs and see what we can do about the place. Maybe I should show you from up here actually before I go down. Hold on. So this is what it looks like from up here. Actually, this is a Maybe it's easier for you to actually tell them, get a feeling of the space. Uh, we have all the hearts in the window as well. We're gonna turn those into Easter eggs and get rid of this table. I think what we're going to do is move the couch and these two small tables and the chair and just have one table go out this way and another one go out here and maybe just keep this one so we want to make room for both all these knitters. They have to, they need room for their coffee and their knitting, but also we want to have, keep the space around the uh, yarn and the leather work that Tina made so that there will be also space enough that you can go around and look at the yarn and shop a little and look at all the models down there. So let's see what we can do about that. I can move the couch by myself, I'll see. If anyone is at work and next door and they can come and help me move the couch and we can get going. I'm downstairs in front of all my models and I just want to continue a little bit with the diamond uh, lace pattern that I showed you before on the diamond sweater. And let's just take what in whatever order I have them here. I usually wear my... Um, Giselle shawl in the colors in my own yarn. But uh, since I left that at home, I'm gonna show you the original version, which is not in my own yarn, but you see the concept. I bet you have seen this a million times before, but you can see what I wanna show you is just that the diamond lace pattern um, is the same. And you can tell it's been pulled this way a little bit because this is how I wear it. Whenever I wear the shawl, I just kind of pull it a little bit to make it stretchy. And if you block it, it'll go back to the original shape. It's not really important. You can see the diamond sweater as well in another colorway. This was um, actually made by Mede, who owns the local yarn store. And it is not in my yarn, but it is in the original yarn, which is the Mohair by Canal, which is a Danish mohair yarn owner. She has beautiful silk mohair. And this is the spring diamond vest. Same diamond lace pattern, but this is with knit in work with two strands of silk mohair. And so is this sweater. The, it's like this only with sleeves. And I, didn't ha I don't have it here at the studio because uh, Nomi is wearing that a lot. So I only have this version and this is not in my own yarn either. This is uh, also in this um, brushed lace from a mohair by Kana, which is a gorgeous uh, silk mohair. But this is the vest and I also have this sweater. And 
diamond. This is the Mega Diamond Cardi. You can tell it's the same diamond uh, pattern. I think I published this one last year. Uh, it's really hard to have this on a hanger. <laughs> Um, but this is knit in my mega, mega mohair or my, um, yeah, my mega mohair. And, um, <clears throat> this is a size small. I have this one for myself in the soft peach colorway that I think is really pretty. So last thing is my Giselle hat, which is a favorite of mine. It's, uh, a DK Deluxe, Alpaca Deluxe on the inside, which is really, really soft. And then you have this beautiful lace pattern on the outside. And uh, I'm sure I've shown you this before, but I don't think I've ever really talked about how this lace, diamond lace pattern uh, has been used uh, multiple times. Like this. Uh, it is a little bit cold today, but I think that we are done with uh, hats and mittens for a little while at least here in Denmark now. You never know actually. Um, with the weather, you can have gorgeous weather in March and then it'll snow in April. <laughs> so until we hit May, the weather can be either way. It can be beautiful and it can still be winter. So uh, sometimes it snows in April. Anyway, that was all I wanted to show with the diamond lace pattern. Now I really need to get uh, going on fixing this um, studio space. to the studio so we are going to make some easter egg decorations and Tina will be in charge of how to do that <laughs> and I will follow her lead but I'll put the camera up and we'll do a little quick time video so you can see what it looks like when we do this um, easter egg decorations and then we will change it downstairs and remove all the hearts and have the easter theme <laughs> 